You are listening to the Shepherd's Tent Message of the Week. We hope you enjoy this teaching from the family. In December and even January, just last month, Mark released as father over this house that the, the, the word for 2023 is this, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The word for 2023, the word for 2023 is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And so as I begin to, as I begin to pray this week, he asked me earlier this week, hey, would you, be, would you be willing to speak? And I began to ask the Lord, and I was like, what is it, what is it that you have for the family today? And he said, remember your responsibility, responsibility to steward the word that Mark has already released into this home. And so what I want to do is take it just a little bit further in something that he has already released for us. So I stand on his authority and release this into our family as the word for the year is Jesus, Jesus Jesus. And I, and I find that there is, for me at least in this time, there is no more fitting a passage than John chapter 6. And we're going to look to the very end of the chapter. You may already be familiar, but that this particular passage is, is special to me. Um, it, it, we're going to get to it, but in verse 68, Yeshua asks Peter, he asks him, he says, are you too, rather he asks all of his disciples, but Peter answered, he asked his disciples and he said, are you going to leave me too? Do you want to leave too? And Peter looked at him and said, only you have the words of life. And that struck me. That was a big, 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 really, really big deal. That was a big deal. And so I asked the Lord, I said, God, I want a picture because I want that. I want to I want to symbolize that with imagery. I want a picture that I can tattoo on my arm. And so I just began to ask the Lord. I was like, what is that picture? What represents only you give the words of life? And the, the word life really stood out to me. And I began to ask and pray a little deeper into that. And I remembered that there is there is this this picture of life, this picture of anointing. And every time a king was anointed, olive oil was used. And he took me back even a little bit further than that, and he took me back to the story of Noah and his ark. And he sent out a dove, and he sent out a dove actually twice, right? He sent out a dove the first time, and it came back, and it was, it was empty-handed. And so he knew that the floodwaters that had covered the earth had not yet receded to a point where they could, where they could dock and get off the boat, right? So they wait some time and he sends out another, he sends out another dove. And at this time it comes back with an olive branch signifying there was life again on the planet. There was life again on the face of the earth. And Yahweh began to show me that this picture of this olive branch, this olive, this olive oil, all throughout scripture represents a gifting, a picture, an anointing of life and identity. And this this passage just stood out to me. And so that's why I have an olive branch on my arm. If you have an olive branch or you have something on your wall, we've got an olive at at, uh, at our house as well. It may represent something completely different for you, and I'm completely fine with that. But for me, when I read the words of Peter the apostle, and he looked at Yeshua, and he said, only you have the words of life. Where else would I go? I said, yeah. And as our father here in this house released the word for us in this year to say, Jesus, 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 everything is going to be about praising the name of Jesus, lifting him high, screaming his name, raising the volume here in this family for this region. Yahweh said, man, stick to what you know. Stick right in there. In this passage, this is a very long chapter. There's over 70 verses in in John chapter 6. And remember, John... The apostle did not write in chapters and verses. We added those later. So it just so happens that's where we kind of divided stuff up. But John just, man, he just wrote. He just wrote. And in this passage, he was remembering and recording a teaching by Jesus that was very hard for many people to digest. That's a double meaning there. Because there was a physical, what they thought, digestion being placed before them that didn't make any sense. And so, this is one of those instances where Jesus gives something really random and really confusing and he doesn't explain it and he just leaves it. And I believe that even for our family, there are words that have been released that don't need explanation. 
And if their frequency matches your frequency and you receive that, it's a call for you to go deeper and ask the Lord, what does this mean? It is not Mark's responsibility to explain everything to you. It's not my responsibility to explain everything to you. It's not the responsibility of any other teacher outside of the Holy Spirit to explain to you the mysteries that are hidden in his revelation. Proverbs chapter 25, 2 said, It is the glory of kings to seek them out. I wrote it down. I'm going to read to you. It says, verse 2, Proverbs 25, verse 2 says, God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory, but the honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. You have not been called to write an email to Mark after a sermon when you've been left a little bit hanging and say, what did you mean when? Take it to the throne room. Ask him first. Ask, ask the Lord first. That is a matter of honor. And it's a matter of revealing to you where your trust lies. Because if you're not careful, you'll become codependent on a man. And as faithful and as trustworthy as he is, we have not been created to be codependent upon a teacher. We've been co-created. To, yeah, we've been created to be codependent on the good teacher. The good shepherd. That's who we've been assigned to. And so as we talk today, as we, I want to just give you a little bit. I'll tell you the great lie of all preachers. I'll have you out by 1 o'clock. One, I should have said 1. 1.55. I'll have you out by 1.55, hopefully sooner. I really don't want to keep you very long. But I do want to read in John chapter 6. What we're going to do, we're going to read verses 61 to 69. And I'm going to give you just a little bit of pretext before we do that. What had just happened was Jesus was giving a, uh, he was delivering a sermon and in this sermon, we've talked about this before. I may have talked about this here before. But in this message, the Lord was trying to convey the reality of spiritual things through a physical medium. And that produced confusion in those who did not have ears to hear. You with me? I'm going to say it again. The Lord was sharing a revelation that brought confusion to those who did not have an ear to, e an ear to hear. And as we have come through this past year in 2022, we have seen and witnessed those who did not have an ear to hear walk away. It's a big deal. And it's difficult sometimes. But Yahweh has an answer for that, that he revealed through Jesus in this particular passage. And we're going to cover it this morning. But I want you to understand, when when a teaching is released and it strikes your frequency and you've been given an ear to hear, pray into that a little deeper. Ask the Lord, where, where is this supposed to resonate with me? How does this fit into what you've called me into? What does it mean to be a screaming one seraphim? Do you see? Do you see? I, can't, I can only prophesy in part because I can only see in part. But he sees and prophesies and reveals in whole according to his providential will. So he had just given this teaching and essentially he had said, if you want to partake with me, if you want to have divine communion with me, if you want to walk in union with me, you have to eat my flesh and you have to drink my blood. Literally what he said. And folks grossed out and lost their minds. What in the world is going on? There were even Pharisees in the crowd that said, has he lost it? What is he talking about? Who can understand this? They did not have an ear to hear. And so he comes off of this teaching and it says that his disciples, the crowd around him, begin to turn away and leave. And in this context, I want to pick up in John chapter 6, verse 61. We're going to read down through verse, uh, verse 69. So there in verse 61, it says, um, excuse me, I'm going to back up to 60. I know, Rebecca, I told you 61, and I apologize. I'm going to start in verse 60. If you don't have it in front of you, that's okay. It's not a long verse, and then we'll be at 61. Verse 60 says, and when many of Jesus' followers heard these things, it caused a stir. That's disgusting, they said. How could anybody accept it? Verse 61, without anyone telling him, Jesus knew they were outraged and told them, are you offended over my teaching? What will you do when you see the Son of Man ascending into the realm from where he came? The Holy Spirit is the one who gives life. That which is of the natural realm is no help. 
The words I speak to you are spirit and life. But there are still some of you who won't believe. In fact, Jesus already knew from the beginning who the skeptics were and who his traitor would be. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one embraces me unless the Father has given you to me. I'm going to read that very closely once more. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one embraces me unless the Father has given you to me. And so from that time on, many of the disciples turned their backs on Jesus and refused to be associated with him. So Jesus said to his 12, and you, do you also want to leave? Peter spoke up and said, but Lord, where would we go? No one but you gives us the revelation of eternal life. We are fully convinced that you are the anointed one, the son of the living God, and we believe in you. You are the anointed one, the son of the living God, and we believe in you. In verse 61, Jesus poses the question. He says, are you offended by my teaching? That kind of bounces me back to what I opened up with, and I, I, want, I want to get across a very quick point. I'm going to move on to the next verse, but the very quick point is there will be some things that will be presented, whether from Mark, from myself, from this house, from apostle, from other houses within the family. There may be a teaching that you receive from a whisper, and it may at first offend you. Don't walk away. Pray into it. Ask the Lord, what is this actually about? Because if it came from the Lord, it is meant for you to find the understanding. It is the wisdom of kings to search it out. It is the wisdom of kings to search it out. This means there will be coming to you mysteries. And mysteries are not meant for you to be puzzled and to remain puzzled. They are meant for you to understand, to see, to receive. Mysteries are an invitation, not a rebuttal. Mysteries are an invitation, not a rebuttal. And we as a family in this region have been called into mystery after mystery after mystery after mystery because they are invitations. And Yahweh's saying, come a little closer, come a little closer. And it's what the angels see and say, wow. It's what the angels look curiously upon. And that word curiously carries the idea of, I don't have access to that, but I'm going to gaze at it. I'm going to gaze at it. I'm going to look into what I can't have, and it's beautiful, and I'm just going to watch it unfold and develop and take place. And you have been called into that place of mystery. You have been invited. And so typically, most times when I stand up here and and, and just share something with you, I always want to release permission. And this morning, afternoon, today, I want to release permission for you to walk into the mystery. That's not the first time that this invitation has been given. That's not the first time this permission has been given. So maybe today is just a reminder. But if you've not heard that before, hear it now. You have been given permission to walk into the mystery if it's calling you. And if the person next to you is not walking into that same mystery, you'll notice. Because in a family like this, with revelation like this, You can't hide. And Yeshua makes this point very, very clear. Very clear in this passage. But I'm going to get to that. Verse 62, Jesus said, What will you do when you see the Son of Man ascending into the realm from where he came? Essentially what he's saying is if you can't get past what I just taught you, What makes you think that when I am transfigured, shining in my radiant glory, allowing you to see me in my throne room, in my 100% glory of who I am, why do I think and why do you think that you're going to receive that if you won't receive me now standing in front of you as a man saying, this is the way for the kingdom? Oh, Lord, but if you would just come to me like this, if you would just present yourself in a way like this, oftentimes my prayer can look like if the Lord would just do blank, I'd receive a breakthrough. If the Lord would just reveal himself to me in this way, that would greatly help me. And what's happening is Yahweh is offering me an invitation into a mystery, and I'm saying, no, not like that. No, not like that. How can this be? That is disgusting. If you are not able to receive the revelation of me now, how can you receive the revelation when I am standing in my natural realm? Apostle taught just a few weeks ago on the transfiguration. 
And he, and he positioned the idea, proposed the idea that on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus was revealed, that was the true nature and visibility of Yeshua on the planet. And Peter, James, and John got to see it. No one else did. When his face shone with a, the brightest light and his clothes were whiter than wool, this was a glimpse, a peek, an invitation into a mystery of what Yeshua really was, who he really was, what he really looked like, and what he actually carried. And they got a glimpse into that. And he's saying here in this passage, if you're not willing to receive me as I come to you, why would you receive me if I showed up in all my glory? It's an if then. And the whole thing, the whole thing is a call into obedience. Verse 63 says, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives life. That which is of the natural realm is no help. The words I speak to you are spirit and life, but there are still some of you who won't believe. The scholar Merrill Tinney, you don't have to know that name. I'm just giving credit where credit was due. The scholar Merrill Tinney translated this verse as such. Check this out. He says, the spirit, this was, a, this was essentially a translation of this verse. It read, the spirit imparts life to the believer. It is not transmitted by the process of physical eating. I'm going to read it to you again in case you didn't catch it. The spirit imparts life to the believer. It is not transmitted by physical eating. Jesus just got done saying, if you want to have union with me, you've got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And here in this verse, he says, that which is of the natural realm is no help. That which is of the natural realm is of no help. Is this a contradiction? No, it's an invitation into a mystery. It's an invitation into a mystery that says, Yahweh, I don't quite understand this. I don't quite get this. But there's something here. There's a frequency that's drawing me in. There's a frequency that's drawing me in, and I can't ignore it. There is a level of redemption that is available to my family, and I can't ignore it. And I don't exactly have the formula, but I'm going to trust. All of this is about taking a walk with him. All of this is about taking a walk with him. It's all an invitation into trust. Every single bit of it, every single bit is all about an invitation and a trust. 63 again, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives life. That which is of the natural realm is of no help. The words I speak to you are spirit and life, but there are still some of you who won't believe. Verse 64, in fact, Jesus already knew from the beginning who the skeptics were and who his traitor would be. This distinction has been made before, and I want to remind you because it's very important. This verse, in fact, Jesus already knew from the beginning who the skeptics were and who his traitor would be. I thoroughly, genuinely believe this is not true because Yeshua was God. This verse is true because Yeshua walked in unity with Yahweh under power and conviction of the Holy Spirit. And he was given the insight and understanding and knowledge of what was going on around him because of the relationship that he walked into. And that's the same relationship that we've been invited to. The same one. This verse can be just as true for you as it was for Jesus because you've been given access. Don't doubt. Don't doubt what you've been called into. Don't doubt. Don't doubt the inheritance. Accept it. Believe it. Walk in it and watch it change. If you don't, then you won't. It really is that simple. If you don't, then you won't. 65, he went on to say, this is why I told you that no one embraces me unless the Father has given, given you to me. Evan Kilpatrick is not here this morning. He's at home uh, with his son, Micah. Micah's not feeling too well. But Evan, Evan, Evan walks in a manner of wisdom that's 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 unlike most. And a while back, we were talking about different, different relationships, if you will. This was probably back when we were meeting in the mill down in Porterdale. So it's been some time. This is pre-COVID, right? So 2019 at least. And, and we were talking about different people. And even at that point in time, you know, this family, this, this local chapter here, this church, is we're only about four years old. Apostle says you subtract COVID, we're really only about two years old. That's about the reality of things. But so at the very beginning, we even then had some people who had come and, and, and left, right? 
And Evan made this comment about a particular person, and he said, I never knew them by the Spirit. He said, I never knew them by the Spirit. And I said, what do you mean? And he didn't really have a great explanation because, again, that was his utterance was, a, was an invitation into a mystery. But what I came to understand that when Evan said, I never really knew them by the Spirit, there is a frequency and connection that those who have been called to walk this path share. And those who have not been given that invitation by Yahweh to walk this path don't have that frequency. And some will come, and I don't really mean this as a warning, and so I don't want you to think this is doom and gloom, but this is reality, and you must know, some will come and fake it. And some will be really good at faking it. Really Really good. Deceivingly good. And I'll tell you this, the people who are the deceivingliest goodest, you like that? That's good. Preach. Come on. Those who are the deceivingliest goodest are the most self-deceived. It's a big deal. And they can be so self-deceived that it may throw you off unless you pay attention to, do I know them by the Spirit? Do I know them by the Spirit? Because Yeshua said that only those who embrace me, all of them have been given to me by Yahweh. If you embrace me, you've been given to me. And if you've not been given to me, you can try to embrace me, but you will never experience the haptomai. You will never experience the full-on embrace because it's not been given to you. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to cause confusion. I'm not saying, watch me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this very carefully. I do believe that we as saints have been predestined to receive the glory and the invitation that is fully ours. And in that predestination, there is a choice for us to receive it. And if it has been given to you, that is available for you to choose. And I believe that there is a mystery. There is an invitation to a mystery that says, what's the difference? Where's the line? Where's the threshold between the predestination and the choice? And I'm going to stand in front of you right here and say, I don't really know. But if you'll just walk a little closer into that mystery, he's going to give you a wisdom and understanding that I cannot And it'll begin to make sense and you will see there is a connection and I know you by the spirit and I can't explain it. I can't explain it, but it's as real to me as anything else. It's as real to me as anything else. The seraphim thing is as real to me as I know anything else. And it's real for you. Why? I don't know, but he's given it to you. There's an invitation. And if you'll walk into that, I don't know the anointing that you carry, but it's evident. And I've watched it change him in the last two years. He is not the man I met two years ago in the house in East Haven. He's completely different. There are few people in this room that encourage me to the degree that Ryan White does. And he doesn't even have to try. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. It's not special text messages. It's not special calls. It's not special things he does. No, it's not special things he says. It's just the way he walks. He is. Yeah. And I know him by the Spirit. And we will always scream together. I felt like a crazy person. <laughs> Where's Lou Engle when you need him, you know? Come on, just, just, you know, come on. Yeah. If, 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 if Brother Lou can just do it as he's, I mean, you know, you know something's good when he, if y'all hadn't seen the videos, y'all got, he'll sit there in the chair and he'll just do this. And I'm telling you, he's feeling something by the Spirit. He's feeling something. He's sensing something by the Spirit. And his body is, I'd bet money. I would bet money. That he don't even know he's doing it. 
At this point, not a clue. I've never met the man. Nothing but honor and respect for him. Don't hear me. I'm not saying anything negative about him at all. But I genuinely believe watching him, he don't even know he's rocking. It's just a spiritual invitation into a mystery. And that invitation was given here today. And it will be given here on Wednesday, and it will be given here next Sunday, and it will be given every time we gather, and every time we get together in one another's homes, and every time we go and have dinner with each other, and every time we go to Walmart, there will be an invitation. One day I'm going to say every time we go to Target, because there's going to be a Target here in Covington soon. I'm sick of driving 30 minutes. I used to live in Conyers, and then I moved here. Target's not really any further living here, but nonetheless, we need one here. Right next door to Publix, I'm telling you, right there. You know what I'm saying? And it's just going to be a prophetic announcement that all that's right next to the airport. We're going to have jets one day. What kind of jets? I don't know, but I'm just going to receive it now. It's an invitation into a mystery. I'm being a little bit, you know, joking around, but hey, I'm going to sow a seed. Why not? Why not one day? Hey, we're going we're gonna to fly from that airport one day, any and everywhere we need to go. And Papa Chris is going to buy us all planes. What's up? Thank you, sir. Going to buy us all planes. I'm telling you. We flowing this morning, you know? Going to buy us all planes. Yeah. But it's a big deal, and it was a big deal to me when Evan said, I, I never knew them by the Spirit. I never knew them by the Spirit, and they left. And there have been others that have come. There have been others that have, that have, that have gone. But as we, as we move into this, this new year that started for us on December 11th, wasn't that the day? December 11th was the new year for us. So we're a good two and a half months into this thing at this point. Two months, I don't know, do the math. Somewhere in there, I don't know, whatever, 60 days-ish. But this invitation for us has been extended to walk into this mystery, and Yahweh says, if you've been given an ear to hear, hear. If you have been called to embrace me, do so, because you've been given full permission. And I'm choosing to believe that if Yahweh has given me permission to embrace his son, I don't need permission from anyone else. And that's just as true for you. That's just as true for you. Where did we stop? Verse 65. Look at this. It's, oh, it's one. Wow, that was a quick 20 minutes. Look, I've only got two more pages. We're a third of the way through, and the last page is just one big paragraph that I'm just going to read to you. So we're basically halfway done. Verse 66. And so from that time on, many of the disciples turned their backs on Jesus and refused to be associated with him. The phrase from that time on, in the Greek, could also be translated. There's just as good a translation, a secondary translation, that could, excuse me, that could read, because of this utterance, many of the disciples turned their backs on Jesus. Nah, too far. Too weird. Too abnormal. And I'll tell you this, I'll repeat the words of our apostle. We don't know what we like, we like what we know. And as we're being called into an invitation to mystery, there will be things that we don't know yet in the physical, but the Spirit will call us. And you'll be reminded, are you going to press forward into this and learn to know that? Or will you only like the things that you know now and be complacent? It's a big deal. I genuinely believe, watch me, how do I say this the best way? Lord, give me, give me wisdom to say this rightly. If you treat the embrace as common, it is easy to let go. If you treat the embrace as common, it is easy to let go. And he reminds us on a consistent basis, do not treat this as common. What we have is different. We sat, what was it, a couple Sundays ago? We sat back there. We've, we've adopted sort of a new, uh, a new schedule flow kind of deal for our rehearsals for our worship collective. And they involve getting here a little bit earlier on Sundays. And we have time, intentional time, that we've reserved to go back here in this, in this room, this hospitality room. And we just share some breakfast together. Very light, you know, like parfaits, granola bars, bananas, whatever you got. I mean, peanut butter crackers for all I, I don't know, parfait, you know. Is, you know. 
you got to, when you hold the spoon, you're, you know, we'll go back there and we'll share a meal and we'll share some coffee and, and drink whatever, you know, I mean, it's all good. But, but in that conversation that just sort of naturally happens, Alec brought up, he was, he was telling someone, else, someone outside of our family, kind of how our collective exists and functions. And, and I just told you a few minutes ago how, you know, I told you Mark and Destiny have asked Courtney and I to help direct this collective, but I don't pick the song. When I lead a song, I've picked that song. But Kyra picked the song that she sang today. Joel picked the song that he sang today. Olivia was just flowing in the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? So like... But I didn't ask for any of that. They said, hey, let's do this. And I said, bro, let's go. And we learned the songs and we played them. And so in this, in this thing of how we do things, Alec was explaining this to someone and they were blown away. And Alec reminded us, he said, this is not normal what we have. And when you treat the embrace as common, you may let go. I don't mean that you're out, and I'm not saying that you'll lose your salvation. I don't mean that at all. But I do mean you may lose the sweet aroma. Do you see? You can lose the sweet. I don't, you may need to correct this when I'm done, but I'm just going to go for it. You can, you can walk away from that embrace, and that aroma can drift off of you. Does that make sense? And I don't want that for anyone in this room at all. But I'm offering you a warning to be attentive to those who you know by the Spirit and those that you don't. Be attentive to that. And as a, as a father now, everything changed when I became a dad. They, everybody told me that it would, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, even Hollywood says that, you know, everything changed, you know. And then we had a baby, and <laughs> everything changed, like all of it. It just became amazing. And I look, I look, I sit, I sit here at this keyboard, and I look. My wife, my wife and my daughter sit over here in the corner most Sundays, and I can see Ember. And she, this morning, she was sitting beside Ellie, and she was just looking around. And she was playing, and she does this. She does this thing, you know, and if you've seen her, um, it was great. Olivia found the couple weeks ago when she was sitting, when Ember was sitting here, and she goes, blah, and you're like, ah. She found it on the, on the clip on the live stream and sent it to us. It was amazing. So I've still got it in my phone. You can hear my daughter with no microphone at all go, ah, and then Mark's like, it was great, you know. But I watched my daughter, and I just, the mysteries that she will walk into. The mystery. That's why those colors are such a big deal. You are always welcome to bring those flags back and just wave those colors. We splatter paint walls in this room, and you were a part of that this morning. Colors can be invitations into mysteries. And if you don't believe it, you won't see it. It's it's that simple. Do you remember, and, and, and you may need to give me a little bit of additional info here, but it's been some years ago in South Carolina, there was a, there was a story of a little, a little child who, who, was it a dandelion that turned into a butterfly? Was that, the, was that what it was? S- came inside and told his, his parents, her parents, his, his parents, came inside and told his parents, I just, I, just, I just saw a dandelion turn into a butterfly. Dandelions don't turn into butterflies. Caterpillars do, not dandelions. But this kid said, you are a butterfly, and the thing turned into a butterfly, and he's the only one that saw it, and he came in and he told his parents, and do you know what Apostle said about that? He said, if you don't believe that, you'll never see it. You'll never see it. It's an invitation. I believe that story to this day is an invitation into a mystery where we have been called and given the authority to speak purpose, and that little boy, I don't even know who it was. Do I know who it was? Who was it? No, I don't know. Oh, cool. Okay, there you go. So I'm, I'm, we're in the same camp. But some little boy saw a dandelion and said, you're a butterfly, and it became a butterfly because he accepted the frequency that he has. And if you're not attentive to those that you know by the Spirit, as a father, it is my responsibility to protect my children and if I don't know you by the spirit you're not going to come around my kid much if you're a parent you should have said amen loud right there That's true. 
if I don't know you by the Spirit, you're not going to come around much. And I'm not going to apologize for it either. And if you get offended and walk away, I mean, point proven. I don't have anything to lose. And I don't want to sound cold, but I do want to sound truthful. What we have is not common. And if we treat it as such, we can walk away from that aroma. It's a big deal. Verse 66 says again, and so from that time on, many of the disciples turned their backs on Jesus and refused to be associated with him. Once Jesus effectively discouraged every material and earthly motive for following him, many stopped following Once Jesus effectively discouraged every material and earthly motive for following him, many stopped following. This is a joke that I'm about to make, but if you're here to have a jet, it's not going to happen. Do you see what I'm saying? Press past what I just said. Dive a little deeper into that. If your motives for being a part of this, these sleeves, I swear. If, If your motive for being a part of this family and this uncommon place of aroma and mystery. I like that. Somebody better write that down. This uncommon place of aromatic mystery. Ooh, that's good. Ooh. That's good. You like that? Hey, sp- jazz hands. If you are going to be a part of this place of aromatic mystery, There is a high level of honor that will be imparted to you that will make difficult decisions seem as common sense. That's right. That's right. That's right. And it's why you can move across an entire country to be here. It's why you can come from another country to be here. It's why you say, why am I driving all the way across Atlanta? And what happened with Alan and Netta today? They got seated in a level of identity that will forever change my daughter's life. Why did they drive from Douglasville to Covington? And I'm not going to name names, but I know some churches out there on that side that it would have been really easy to be a part of because they're incredibly seeker friendly. And they say, if you want to join, we're going to make it as easy for you as possible. And you can leave just as easily as possible as you, as you joined. But if you're going to be a part of this aromatic mystery, there is a deeper level of spiritual connection and frequency. That I'm using these words, but these words probably aren't the best words. But if they're making sense to you, if they're making sense to you, that frequency is in you. And if they're not making sense to you, you can ask for the frequency, but I can't give it to you. Yahweh can. And if he does, you'll embrace Yeshua. And when you do, You'll never look away. In this family, we've seen people come and we'll see people go. I'm not saying that as cliche. I really do mean that. I'm not going to name names because it doesn't, it doesn't, names don't matter. But this is a, this is a true statement for this family. We've seen people come and we'll see people go. In this family, people will only be given the opportunity to look directly into the eyes of truth. They will only be given the opportunity to look directly into the eyes of truth. They will only be given the opportunity to look directly into the eyes of truth. And truth has a name, Jesus. And it's what has changed generations and will stand as a witness to change generations with a redemptive holiness that cannot be explained other than there's a frequency that they have. And it makes them different. And I don't really have great words for it. But it's as true as this beam in the middle of this room. I know it's there. 
I know, I hate it, but I know it's there. <laughs> anything, anything other than being given to Yeshua by Yahweh will result in a falling away. Anything other than being given to Yeshua by Yahweh will result in a, following, in a falling away. Church hurt and church burn come directly from this. Mark has said it in this room from this table before. If a person walks away from the church due to church hurt or burn, they never looked into the eyes of grace because they didn't leave the eyes of grace. They left the doors of the church. They left the people that they thought they knew but didn't. You can sit quiet if you want to, but I'll stand by that till the day I die. If you walk away from the church, you never looked into the eyes of grace and truth. Because when you do, you'll never leave that. And the church may hurt you, but you'll say, hey, man, I'm sticking with the eyes of truth. And you'll look just like Peter the Rock and look at Jesus and say, only you have the words of life. Where else would I go? Only you have the words of life. That hurt, and I don't want to repeat that again, and I don't really, really want to be around those people again because they seem to not know the eyes of grace and truth either, but only you have the, only you have the words of life. And you'll never walk away from that. And when we watch people walk away from that, they faked it. They may have known, they may not have known. Because you can lie to yourself. I can lie to myself better than I can lie to any of y'all any day of the week. Don't look at me like you don't know what I mean. That's, that's a real, I'm just being real transparent with you. I can lie to myself. I'm not, I've not gained that much weight. I mean, you know. <laughs> my, my pants still fit. Caleb, you got a stretchy waistband on your pants. Of course they still fit. You know, what are you going to do? My feet haven't grown, bless God. So we're good there. So as long as I don't have to like, you know, do all that. My feet haven't grown. You've been given permission to step into the invitation of mystery. I want to I want to go a little step further in my in my comments and remarks about church hurt and being burnt. Jesus said this in John chapter 12, just a few chapters later. John chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. He says, from this moment on, everything in this world is about to change. Now, this is, this is pre-crucifixion Jesus talking. That's very important to understand. From this moment on, verse 31, everything in this world is about to change. For the ruler of this dark world will be overthrown. And I, 32, will, will do this when I am lifted up off the ground and when I draw the hearts of people to gather them to me. I'm going to read 32 again. And I will do this when I am lifted up off the ground and when I draw the hearts of people to gather them to me. Other translations say, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. When he was crucified and lifted up, that's when he was lifted up. From that moment on, including now and the future, he is drawing men to himself. Men being humans. He is drawing people to himself. That's why when you walk into these doors... There's no banner that says, new here, start here. That's why when there are spontaneous utterances during the music, a lot of times you'll never see the words on the TVs. That's why there was a buff, almost shirtless Jesus dancing with a rainbow skirt around his mid midsection a few weeks ago. It's weird. There he is. There he is. <laughs> I still receive. I still receive. You don't, <laughs> you don't show an image like this when you're trying to attract people into the programs that you have. It doesn't make sense. Because you look at that and you think, oh, they're probably one of those affirming churches. 
Do you know why that's not the case? Because these colors were claimed and never given up by Yahweh thousands of years ago. And they represent a covenant that was made with mankind. And he said, I will never, ever destroy the earth with floodwaters ever again. Do you know why he'll never have to do that? Because he's given us the power and responsibility to change the earth. He doesn't have to start over anymore. He's got us. He doesn't have to start over anymore. He's got Joe, and he's got LD, and he's got Matthew, and he's got Kyra, and he's got Alexis, and they're going to change the world, and no floodwaters will ever be needed ever again, and so the colors represent the rainbow covenant that God said with his people, and he said, I'm going to give you the power and authority and ability to walk forward and change this planet. That's why you're never going to hear teaching from this table that says one One day when you've just messed it all up, Jesus is just going to take you all back home and he's going to handle the rest. And then once he's done it, he'll bring you back and you can just enjoy in the spoils of his victory. That doesn't make sense. Because if it did, what's the rainbow for? It's an empty promise. And if he lied about that, what else has he lied about? But Peter looked him dead in the face and said, only you have the words of life. Where else would I go? Only you have the words of life. Where else would we go? I've mentioned before, and, and, and we've talked about this in the worship collective. You, you may have noticed, you may not, that for the last few months, all of the songs that we have sung have been very specifically and intentionally um, given boundaries to bring praise to the name of Jesus. This is not a negative statement at all, but not all songs praise. That's a fact. That's That's not a bad thing at all. Not all songs praise. Most don't. But I have sensed from the Lord that for a short season... We as a collective are to help lead us as a family in an atmosphere of praise saying, glory, holy, beauty, it's all about you. And in the last few months, this place has looked different. Yes. The honor has risen. The encounters have risen. Children are prophesying in the service. That's a big deal. That's a really big deal. Yeshua said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. That's why we have people coming from all corners of the country and the globe here. Because we're lifting up the name of Jesus. We've not talked about this, but I don't think there's ever going to be a day where we buy gasoline for all the community. We're probably never going to hire a helicopter and drop little, little duckies or little notes to inviting them to our Easter service. <laughs> really hope we don't ever do a trunk of treats, not because there's anything wrong with it, I just don't want to do it. <laughs> but all of the events, the direct mail flyers, y'all, I got one in the mail the other day, I'm not going to mention the church, doesn't matter, I, I'm, not, I'm not bashing it, I'm not bashing it. That's what we have been for. But you're never going to receive a direct mail flyer in your mailbox from the shepherd's tent inviting you to the new series that we're starting in three weeks. I was asked, this is, this is gospel truth. I was asked, when did the maintenance guy come? Tuesday for the garage door openers? I was asked on Tuesday, this guy came. We moved into a rental house here in Covington. Already regret property management. Don't recommend 10 out of 10. But we moved into a rental house here in Covington because one day we'll have our, our land and the place that we own, and That's right. That's right. we can do things ourselves. But the property management, the previous tenant let, didn't leave any of the garage door openers, and when you have an electric garage door and you don't have the opener, it's very inconvenient because then you have to go into the front door, come around to the carport, hit the button, walk back out the carport, into your car. This is a pain. A whole lot easier to just go bloop, open. So the guy came out, you know, the property management hired some third-party maintenance guy to come out. Super great guy. Name was Brandon. I mean, dude was just very pleasant to be around. And I'm waiting for him, waiting 
waiting on him as he's working in the, in the garage, syncing up the, uh, the, the remotes that he had bought um, at Home Depot for $30 a piece. I was like, I could have done this, but we had to wait three weeks, or, you know, whatever. And uh, we get to talking about, like, where he's from, and um, something's vibrating. I don't know what it is. But we get to talking about where he's from, and he's like, I'm, I'm from Loganville. And, uh, and I was like, oh, cool, you know, I've been in the area like a long, like I've been in like 20 years, and so I know a lot about this particular area. And we were talking about where he goes to church and all that. It just kind of came up. I don't know how, but it just kind of came up. And then he asked me, this was a serious question. He asked me, he said, what series are you guys speaking about right now? <laughs> and I was like, well... <laughs> Pastor Mark doesn't really believe in series, and so uh, we don't really have a, a, a series per se. And he was like, oh, really? That, that, okay, cool. And I said, we don't really have a series, but we've been talking about inheriting a mindset of truth that transforms the way we as families act and believe. He didn't know how to receive that. <laughs> I didn't say it exactly like that. It's a little more polished now, but, but nonetheless, I should, and he was like, oh, Cool, yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> he didn't ask what time service was. He didn't ask what days of the week we met. He didn't ask for an address, nothing. Didn't ask if we were on Facebook. Nah, he was like, I'm going to stick to Loganville, fam. And so there's this, there's this idea that you have to do something to attract people so that you can give them what they were created for. And Jesus said, that's not your responsibility, it's mine. If you'll just praise me, I'll handle the rest. And as a family who refuses to treat what we have as common, we will always praise him and he'll handle the rest. I don't always like the songs, but I think in this particular context, there's a little bit of truth. There's a few gospel songs that have the, the line, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. You've heard it. If you haven't heard it, you don't listen to gospel music, and you should. But the line, and it's different in different songs, but essentially the, the main context is always when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Mm. But I think in this particular context, when you have the understanding that we do, nothing is more true. When the praises go up, the identity is found. The blessings do come down. And what Jesus is talking about in this passage, what he's talking about here is, yes, there are physical and earthly benefits to walking in the way that I have prescribed, but the highest priority is an attitude of praise and spiritual aromatic mystery to be enfolded into this family of adoption that carries the blood of Jesus the King. That's highest priority. And when you make that highest priority, you see generations enfolded. And you see screaming ones lift high the name of, of the King. And you can sit in a room for an hour and a half and sing two songs. Because it's no longer about the song or the lyrics or the TVs. It's all about who we're singing to. And you can get lost in that invitation of mystery and forget that it's been an hour. And if you don't forget that it's been an hour and you're just like, how much longer are they going to sing? I want to remind you that there is an invitation and a mystery for you and you can choose to walk into it or not. But if you don't, you won't last here. And that's not me saying there's the door. That's not what this is. I'm just being real blunt. This is not common. Verse 67, so Jesus said to his 12, to the ones closest to him, he said, and you, do you also want to leave? In the Greek, this was not a negative question. Jesus was not setting them up. A better translation could read, you don't want to go away too, do you? You don't want to go away too, do you? Sixty-eight, Peter spoke up and said, but Lord, where would we go? No one but you gives us the revelation of eternal life. We are fully convinced that you are the anointed one, the son of the living God. 
And we believe in you. There's a scholar, multiple scholars that put out a, a, a commentary. Their, their last names are Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown. And it's a very popular commentary series, Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown. And I'm mentioning this because I, I must give credit to where credit is due. But they took those two verses and they, they essentially expanded upon them. They essentially expanded upon them. And this is, this is how they rewrote 68 and part of 69. Let me read the verses again. I'm going to back up and I'll read 68, 69, and then I'm going to just jump right into this, this uh, expansion, if you will. Peter spoke up and said, but Lord, where would we go? No one but you gives us the revelation of eternal life. We're fully convinced that you are the anointed one, the son of the living God, and we believe in you. That is... We cannot deny that we have been staggered as well as they. And seeing so many go away who, as we thought, might have been retained by teaching a little less hard to take in. Our own enduring has been given, has been severely tried. Nor have we been able to stop short of the question, shall we follow the rest and give it up? But when it came to this, our light returned. And our hearts were reassured. For as soon as we thought of going away, there arose upon us that awful question, to whom shall we go? To the lifeless formalism and wretched traditions of the elders? To the God's many and the Lord's many of the heathen around us? Or to blank unbelief? Nay, Lord, we are shut up. They have none of that eternal life to offer us, whereof thou hast been discour discoursing. In other words, rich and ravishing, as well as in words staggering to human wisdom. That life we cannot want. That life we have learnt to crave as a necessity of the deeper nature which thou hast awakened. The words of that eternal life. The authority to reveal it and the power to confer it. Thou hast, therefore we will stay with thee. We must. We will stay with thee, for we must. Only you have the words of life. We're fully convinced that you are the anointed one, the son of the living God, and we believe in you. It didn't matter who walked away. He had found the real thing, and he wanted nothing else. He had found the real thing, and he wanted Nothing else. You have been given permission to accept the invitation into mystery. Because you have found a place of aromatic mystery that has called to you. And if you'll walk in further, it will change everything about you for the good. Everything. Everything. And there may be instances and times and relationships that you see that walked in with you. And you thought they were right beside you, ride or die. And they'll fall away. Because something will be presented. And they'll say, mm, that's too much. I'm not going there. That doesn't make sense. I'm not about that. And you'll be likely in a position again where you'll be given opportunity to gaze into the beauty and the words of eternal life, this invitation into a mystery, and you will say, where else could I go? There's no other place. There's no other place. No one else has the words of life. There's nowhere else for me to go. I must follow. I must. And as that, as that swirl happens, Yahweh's faithfulness and trustworthiness will only be made manifest in your life. Only be made manifest in your life. Every time. Without fail. Because he's good. And he has invited you into a relationship with him that says, I'll always take care of you. 
I'll always be right beside you. I go before you and behind you, above you and below you. I am your strong tower. I am your guard. You will never walk alone. And things that will seem impossible, things that will seem as though they make no sense in a worldly measure, will, because of frequency and mystery, just line up. I'm not saying it'll come without struggle. Apostle mentioned just a few weeks ago, when you make these transitions and these moves, if there is a massive amount of struggle attached to that, it's witness that the enemy sees what's on you and is trying to prevent the glory that will come from you. But he's already been defeated because there is no power for him to hold. That's why Bobby Lindley told his son when his son said, Dad, who's the devil? He appropriately said, you don't need to worry about him. It was Bobby, was it not? Wasn't it? You don't need to worry about him. You don't need to worry about someone who has no power. I've been called to walk in union. I've been given an invitation into mystery. And the generations that have come before me and the generations that will come after me will benefit because of my yes. And the same is true for you. Only you have the words of life. Where else would I go? Only you have the words of life. Family, you've been given permission to walk into the aromatic mystery with words ravishing and pure and holy and true. Thank you, Abba. Thank you for listening to the message of the week. If you would like to partner with the podcast or find out more information about The Shepherd's Tent, please visit us at theshepherdstent.com.